is my Periscope and there's my Facebook Live. Good afternoon, how are everybody doing? Hope you're having a good Sunday. Wherever you are in the world, I'd stop by to tell you it's cold in Chicago. <laughs> it's cold in Chicago. Okay, it's like zero degree, one degree, five degree, and that's just today. By Wednesday, it's going to be like 15 below. I kid you not. Welcome to Chicago. All righty. <laughs> All right, let's dive right in. Thank you, Father, so much. Lord, we bless your name. We love your God. We bless your name. And another God we will not bow down before. We give you honor as the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the creator of all things, the judge of all things, and the judge of all men. So I ask you, O oh God, to I surrender myself to your precious Holy Spirit. Take over my mind, take over my mouth, breathe through me, O oh God. Let your words be spoken. Let the words you want to be spoken, Lord, to be released to the body of Christ. To the honor and glory of your name, that you might be glorified, that the saints might be edified, and that the demons might be terrified. And we thank you for it, we believe you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All right. So, as always, I'm going to give you a lot of information, so you're going to have to watch this video more than once, because there's going to be a lot of stuff coming at you. All right, so we're going to start with my tagline. What is my tagline? My tagline is, God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to the prophets. Why do I say that every week? Because part of the prophetic anointing and part of the prophetic mantle is to tell you things that are going to happen before they happen, to tell you what's coming. And so when God tells you prophetically what's coming, then you can prepare. And that's why the church, but the city you live in, the state you live in, yea, even the nation, they need a council of prophets. So we can let them know what thus saith the Lord so, so they can know what's coming up. For example, God told Pharaoh through his dreams that there was going to be seven years of plenty then seven years of famine. But he didn't understand what that meant. So he had to call prophet, prophet Joseph out of prison, and Joseph interpreted the dream, and then they were ready. They could deal with that famine because God already told them what was going to happen. But you needed a prophet to interpret what the word of the Lord is. You understand? So there's a whole lot of things that are coming up in 2019 that the Lord already knows about. Remember, God has already lived all the way through time. Remember, God has already written the end of the world. So Jesus has already lived 2019. So why would you not want to know what's going to happen? So that's why you hear me say my tagline every week. God already told you what was going to happen if you would just listen to his servants, the prophets. If you want to get married and you're not married, God will tell you the year your spouse is going to show up. If you want to invest in the stock market, if you want to know where to put your money, God will tell you for that year or that season where to put your money. If you want to know what the devil's going to try to do next so you can get ready, God will tell you what the devil's going to try to do next so you can get ready. Why would you not want that advantage? See what I mean? Okay? So welcome to all my audiences, my Facebook Live audience, my Periscope audience, and if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for uh, watching this video. Now, my goal is to get this word to millions, so I want you to like and share. Whenever God releases a prophetic gift, it's designed to change nations. I want you to think about that. God never releases a prophetic word in the Bible that's not designed to change a nation. Think about it. So if you're watching this video on whatever platform, I want you to please like and share it. So as the word of the Lord comes through, as many saints as possible can hear this. And so unbelievers can hear it too and be challenged. Okay? If you want to sow into my ministry, Matthew 10, 41, whosoever receives a prophet, because he's a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. Uh, I have my PayPal.me link on Facebook Live and my Twitter feed. And then you can go on Amazon Smile. I have a link there too. Uh, so whatever you buy, a portion of that goes to my not-for-profit organization, okay? How to find me? I always hashtag everything I do with hashtag PDT, so you know it's me. There's nothing I have online that's not hashtag with PDT, Prophet David Taylor, so you know it's me, okay? I'm on live every week this time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, and on the second Thursday at 7 p.m. where I do a series called No More Genies, where I help us get rid of our genie concept of God, and get back to true faith action based on what the word actually says versus all these crazy things we've been taught and think, okay? All right, so let's jump into the prophetic word for today. <clears throat> and our prophetic word for today is first month. First month. What do you mean by that, Prophet Taylor? I'll show you. 
Uh, we're going to read Joel 2.23. We're going to look at a couple different versions. First, let's look at the King James, because the King James is the own. well, there's one other version too, actually. But King James is one of two versions that actually uses the English translation month. Be, uh, be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Let's read that in a few other translations, because that's the only one that uses the word month, but I'll explain that to you in a minute. New Living Translation says, Rejoice, ye people of Jerusalem. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for the rain he sends demonstrates his faithfulness. Once more, the autumn rains will come, as well as the rains of spring. Berean Study Bible. Be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the autumn rains for your vindication. He sends you showers, both autumn and spring rains, as before. Now, right off the bat, those almost sound like three different verses. This is why I always tell you that when you do Bible study, you need to spend some time getting into the original languages. You will discover that if you uh, study more with Hebrew and Greek and some Aramaic, that those words are very expansive. In other words, they have more than one meaning, more than one shade. Okay? And so that's why when you read them in different translations, it almost sounds like three different verses. So we're going to look at what God is really saying there, and more importantly, how to apply it to our lives now. What is the Holy Ghost saying to us now? Okay? So it starts off, Be glad, O children of, uh, of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. Now, my pastor just preached about that this morning. And as usual, he was 100% spot on, just straight down the middle. My pastor talked about <clears throat> that when you love righteousness and you hate iniquity, God will anoint you with the oil of gladness, and the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's the joy you have in serving God that stands out to other people when they see you smiling and rejoicing. Okay? So it, it tells us to be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. Okay? So that means that's one of the checkups we need on our Christian lives. Are we glad? Are we rejoicing? I'm not talking about Sometimes putting on a phony smile when you go to work or putting on a phony smile when you go to church or praise the Lord, you know, I'm blessed and highly favored, just kind of saying that out of, you know, habit. I mean, are you truly happy? Do you know how to test as to whether or not you're truly happy? I'll tell you how. Your soul will sing when you're truly happy. You won't get tired when you're really happy. Anything that you do that you love to do, you don't get tired. I mean, three, four, five, six, seven hours can pass and you don't even notice it when you're engrossed in something that you love. Uh, again, your soul will sing. What do I mean by that? I mean, your soul inside of you will rejoice when you get the house you always wanted, when you buy the bike you always wanted, when you get the job you always wanted. You can't fake that. Uh, one of the things that I read in a book and I found out was true is that when your kids walk in the room, all they want to know is, does your face light up? It's so true. If you walk in a room with your parents, you want to know. If you're the child, you want to know. How does mama and daddy react when I come in the room? Because if your face lights up, that's all your kids want to know. You can't fake that. <laughs> you can't fake that. I know my face lights up when I see my kids because I love my kids. You can't fake that. You can't fake it. You can't fake it. I get so happy when I see them. I'm giddy like a child. That's how much I love my children. You can't fake that. See, your soul will sing when you're really happy. But if you find yourself kind of going through the motions, find yourself struggling with depression, find yourself, you know, saying, should I go on, that kind of thing, maybe you need some rest, but you need a checkup for your soul because the Bible says we're supposed to be glad. When we're children of Zion, we're children of God's kingdom. We have a heavenly kingdom and a heavenly city that is our source. So we don't have to be tied into the worldly source. That's why we can always be happy, because no matter what's happening on the natural plane, God says, I got some stuff for you on the heavenly plane, okay? So address the Lord your God, and here, here it goes. Now, the Brian Study Bible, the next line is, for he has given you the autumn rains for your vindication. Do you know what that means? That means that God will prove he's with you and for you in front of other people, by raining down a blessing on your harvest. That's the same thing in Psalm 23 when it says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
So what he says, he's going to give you the autumn rains for your vindication. So in other words, God is going to rain down on you and enrich you and nourish you and bless you. And that will serve as a witness to all the people that have been bad-mouthing you and all the people that have been talking about you and all the people that have been having negative things to say. God's going to bless you right in front of them. And God's going to bless you greatly. He's going to water you right in front of them to prove that he's with you and he's for you. You see that? Now, the King James, it says, for he has given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Uh, and then in New Living, it says, uh, for the rain he sends demonstrates his faithfulness. Once more, the autumn's rain will, autumn rains will come as well as the rains of spring. What do those translations say? They say vindication, moderately, and faithfulness. So in other words, in the King James, it's saying that whatever level of blessing the Lord gave you before, he's about to increase it. He's about to give you more rain. In the Brian Study Bible, it says that he's going to vindicate you. <clears throat> he's going to prove <clears throat> in front of other people that he's with you and for you. And in uh, New Living, it says he's going to demonstrate his faithfulness. See what I mean? Those are all different words, but when you get behind the Hebrew, you can see that they're coming from the same root word that has different possible translations. But here's the next one. Here's the one I've been trying to get to. New Living says, once more the autumn rains will come as well as the rains of spring. Berean says he sends you showers, both autumn and spring rains as before. King James. He will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Do you know what that means? That means that instead of spreading out your blessings over a season and a year, God's going to consolidate them all and make them happen for you in 30 days. <laughs> I'm not making that up. That's right there in the scripture. So in other words, that stuff you've been praying for, you can ask God for an accelerated blessing. Not only does it prove his faithfulness, and not only does it vindicate you, but stuff you were planning on getting in December, you can ask God to give it to you now. The rain, the former rain, and the latter rain. Let's talk about the different rains over the season. But he says in the first month, he's going to give you all that rain in the first month. And we are still in the first month of the year. Okay, January is not over yet. So I want to encourage those of you that are listening to me to think acceleration. Think acceleration. Instead of thinking, well, I'm going to have to wait umpteen years or whatever to get whatever, think I can have it now. What if God gives it to me in 30 days? What if God so waters my crops and enriches what I'm doing that what would have taken a year happens in 30 days? And it vindicates me and it shows his faithfulness, but also it consolidates the time. Do you see that? Yes, yes, yes. And the Holy Ghost wants people to know that these are the kinds of blessings he wants you to start claiming before the Father in the name of Jesus. Because we are in a season now where everything is sped up. Have you noticed that it looks like time, no matter how old you are, looks like time is just, time just popping. Remember when 2016 came in and David Bowie died? Hard to believe that's three years ago. See that? But we're, we're in a time now where things are just popping. Another thing that's happened, if you notice, people are just dropping dead. All kinds of people. That started in 2016. Young, old, ethnic, ethnicity. You know, famous, not famous, whatever. People just, you know why? Because we're in a season where things are sped up. That means your blessings can be sped up too. So the Spirit of God wants us to begin to pray that to the Father, to speed up my blessings. Give me all the rain that would have taken a year to grow my harvest. Give me that in 30 days. Because your blessings can now be sped up. You see what I mean? It's one of the advantages of being a Christian. If you were out there on your own and you were just doing things in the natural, then you have to till your ground, get your seeds, plant your seeds, fertilize it, sit back, wait, wait for the sprouts to come up, maybe fertilize it some more, put those little wooden sticks to prop it up, chase away the birds, chase away the insects, let the sun shine, and then maybe months later you have your harvest. But the scripture is saying you can consolidate that whole process. And all the rain God would have given you over the course of a year, he'll give it to you in 30 days. Wow. Can you imagine 
open doors that would normally take a year and 30 days? Can you imagine networking and connections and relationships? Can you imagine investments? Can you imagine creativity? Okay? The reason that the Spirit of God wants us to begin to pray this way is because things are moving really fast. Remember I told you about, <clears throat> you heard me teach all the time, about the foolish virgins and the wise virgins. Well, well, that story when Jesus told that parable, he said that when the bridegroom comes, he comes without warning, and he comes in and he goes with those that are ready and he shuts the door. What if God is ready to do things in our lives and he's ready to move right now? And you're busy thinking long-term, and God is thinking right now. You see that? Right. Some people, you're going to close on a house. You're going to get your hands on some property in 30 days in the first month. Okay? So if you start thinking that way, that means your blessings can begin to, to, begin to come at an accelerated pace. And things that you thought might have taken you all year to get to, you can get them in 30 days. And you'll be vindicated and the Lord will demonstrate his faithfulness. Can you see that? Now, let me tell you why else that's important. Listen to me carefully. <clears throat> it's important because you don't want to be caught doing January's work in February. What do you mean by that, Prophet Taylor? I mean that if God has given you something to accomplish, you want to hurry up and get it done. Because God is going to be doing something else in February that he's not doing now. That's why he wants you to hurry up and get January's blessings together so that when he's ready to move to the next thing, you're ready to go. If you're not ready to move when God is ready to move, you're going to end up delaying your own blessings. Why would you want to delay your own blessings? What if between now and March, God is going to take you to a multi-million dollar level? The first thing you have to do is get that in your head, <laughs> that it can happen that fast. Well, it can actually happen in a day, but what if he's going to do it over the course of three months? You have to be ready. What would you do if somebody gave you a million dollars? Do you know what your tax obligations are? Do you know what your tithe obligations are? Will you give offerings? Do you do alms? Do you know what alms are? What about your investment schemes? Do you have any investment strategies? Do you have any short-term or long-term investment strategies? Do you have a fine jet? financial advisor, or do you study the market yourself? Do you have a business that you want to build? Do you have debt that you want to pay off? What would you do? You see what I mean? So what if God starts doing that and you've got no plan? So that's why the Holy Ghost is telling us, ask the Father to give us those accelerated blessings, but that means our part is to get ready to move that fast. So you don't want to be caught when February rolls in. You don't want to still be struggling with January assignments. That is how some people miss God. What do you mean by that, Prophet Taylor? <laughs> Jesus wasn't on earth but 33 years, and he wasn't public but three years. If you didn't catch Jesus when he was a man on earth, you missed it. I want you to notice that after the Lord resurrected, he stayed on earth 40 more days, and then he went back to heaven. He did not come back in human form through the womb of a woman again. So if you didn't catch Jesus when he walked to earth, oh well, too bad, so sad for you. You had to be ready when the Lord showed up. When the Lord called his 12, he walked up to them and said, follow me. And they dropped everything they had and they followed the Lord. What if they had said, no, nah, well, let me think about it. Then you would have missed your shot to be one of the 12 disciples of Christ when he walked to earth as a man. That's the way God moves. When the Lord shows up, he's ready to go. The Lord was, you know, relatively quiet for 30 years. Then he went to the Jordan River, got baptized, got filled with the Holy Ghost, got the testimony of the Father, testimony of man, and went to the wilderness. And when he came out of the wilderness, after he passed the temptation with the devil, that was 40 days, he started picking his 12, started teaching in the synagogues, and started doing miracles. He was on the move. And those 12 men, whatever they thought, they had to get their hat <laughs> and get ready because Jesus was on the move. And then three years later, he was arrested, crucified, dead, buried, came back three days later, stayed on the earth 40 more days, then went up in the cloud, and he was gone. What if you were alive in Jerusalem in that time, and you wanted to see Jesus, and you procrastinated, because you thought he was going to be around for a long time? You just took it for granted that since Messiah was on the earth, he's just going to be there at your convenience. Next thing you know, he's arrested, he's crucified, he's dead and buried, 
Three days later, he's raised. Forty days later, he's gone. You missed your shot. You completely missed your chance to see Jesus in the flesh. You had to move when the Lord was ready to move. That's what the Spirit of God is trying to tell us. Get your January stuff done. We got a few more days in January. Get your January stuff done because God's going to be somewhere else in February. And you don't want to be sitting around out of sync with God. Because we have, remember I told you, God has already lived 2019, but we haven't. We have no idea what's coming, but, but we do know that God already knows. And so we always want to be lined up with him. If he's the head, we're the body. We want to be lined up with him at all times. If we do this, we're bones out of joint. That means there's going to be some blessings the Lord's trying to drop down on you. And because you're out of place, you're going to miss him. You won't even see him. Let me give you one of my favorite practical examples. A lot of people that pray for a spouse, sometimes the answer is moving to another city. That happened with one of my cousins. If you've been seeking God for a husband or a wife, sometimes the husband or a wife you've been asking God for lives in another city and lives in another state. You don't have but so long to get your hat <laughs> and move to that state. Because that other person's not going to sit around and wait on you forever. And a whole lot of people have completely missed their spouses because they wouldn't move when God told them to move. God told them to move 10 years ago in 2009, and they still, right where they were, still fighting God, and it's 10 years later. You think that person is going to sit around for 10 years and wait on you? What about a job opportunity? What if there's a business God wants you to open, and that business is going to be on the cutting edge of what's coming next in your industry. So God tells you, go ahead on and open this business now so that when the waves hit, the wave hits, you'll be ahead of it. And what if you procrastinate? You'd be like, yeah, well, whatever. And you don't take that seriously. Know what's going to happen? That wave is going to hit. You're going to miss everything that you could have had. You could have been out in front of it and caught the brunt of it if you had moved when the Lord told you to move. See what I mean? So that's why when we pray for these accelerated blessings, our part is to be ready to stay in sync so that when God is ready to move and God is ready to bless, we're ready to, re to receive. Does that make sense? That's why so many people, I mean, I hate that I even have to say this. That's why so many people are coming back a 10 and a 15 and a 20 years later trying to get their life together. God told you what to do a long time ago. You just didn't want to hear it. A lot of people, a lot of people do that. Moses did that. Moses knew he was the deliverer, but he tried to do it in his own strength. He killed the Egyptian, then he ran. And he stayed out of Egypt for 40 years. Moses built a whole other life on the backside of the desert. God caught back up with him through the burning bush at 80 years of age. So things that Moses could have been doing between the ages of 40 and 80, he ended up having to do between 80 and 120. Because you notice he still had to do it. Notice that the will of God didn't change. Just because Moses didn't get with the program doesn't mean that God changed his mind. It means that you could have been doing that stuff between the ages of 40 and 80. Instead, you know how old Jimmy Carter is? Jimmy Carter is 92 years old. That's the age range Moses was in when he did everything he's famous for. Everything that Moses did he's famous for, he did between 80 and 120. <laughs> because he ran from his calling for 40 years. And I can't tell you the number of people that I've seen coming back decades later, trying to get with God, not understanding that God had so much for you back then when he first called you, when he first talked to you, but you rejected it. You didn't want to hear it. So now it's a 10 and a 20 and a 30 years later. Now you're coming back, trying to get in line, trying to, you know, catch up and make up and things like that. We, we could have skipped all those wasted years if we had just obeyed God when he first called us. So that's why you always hear me talk about all the time, about staying in sync with the Lord. Because Okay, here comes something else. Because things are going to be different by May of this year. May of 2019, things are going to be different. Things are going to be different nationwide. May is going to be a pivotal month. May is the fifth month, January, March, April, May. By May 2019, a whole lot of things are going to be different. You'll see. You remember I told you at the end of January that by the time May hits, some things are going to be radically different. That means we need to be in place. We need to be in sync so that when those major changes come, we are ready to go. Okay? And if not, 
You're going to be like the foolish virgins. You're going to be caught outside and the Lord will have moved on to the next phase of his program. Okay, I'm going to tell you this last little bit and then we're going to move uh, towards the end. A lot of people don't understand that there are times and seasons to have babies. My pastor talked about that this morning too, but the Lord revealed to me four years ago that he was seeding the earth with the next generation of apostles and prophets in 2015. But there were some of his daughters that were going to miss their chance because they weren't in obedience. What that means in no uncertain terms is that like uh, Hannah in the Bible, like Moses' mom, like Jesus' mom, Mary, like John the Baptist's mom, Elizabeth, like Isaac's mom, Sarah, there are some of God's American daughters that he meant to give babies to four years ago. But they weren't in place. They were in disobedience. They weren't doing what the Lord said to do. So he's going to take that baby and give it to somebody else. And you'll see later on when that child comes to power, some of them people could have been American. Some of the next generation of apostles and prophets could have been American. But some of God's American daughters weren't, weren't ready. They weren't in sync. That's how important this is. You can miss your whole destiny. You can miss your whole destiny. You can miss your whole destiny because you don't want to do what the Lord said do when he told you to do it. You can just miss the whole thing and not even know you missed until way later in the game. That's how deep it is. What if Mary hadn't been ready when Gabriel came to her? Because there was no warning. Gabriel just showed up one day and said, Hail Mary, thou art blessed and highly favored. And then Gabriel told Mary everything she needed to know on the spot. What if Mary hadn't been in Jerusalem? What if Mary had just been some other place in her life? She had no warning. It just happened. And all of a sudden she found out in one conversation she's supposed to be the mother of Messiah. Imagine all the Jewish women that had been hoping God was going to pick them to give birth to Messiah, and then Mary finds out in one day, is you. If Mary had been out of sync with God, it would have been Susie, the mother of Jesus, Salome, the mother of Jesus, Joanna, the mother of Jesus, somebody else besides her. That's how important being in sync with God is. You can miss your whole destiny. And some people have. Can you prove that, Prophet Taylor? Yes, I can. Esau. Esau was the firstborn of Isaac and Rebekah. That means the birthright was his. He sold his birthright for a bowl of soup and gave it to Jacob, his younger brother. And Jacob became Israel, father of the 12 tribes. Esau was in line for that. And he just threw it away like his birthright didn't mean anything. And then later on, he tried to get that blessing out of his father. And Isaac was, was like, Already gave out the birthright blessing, ain't but one. And he gave his away. Missed his whole life, missed his whole destiny. Esau could have been a prince. Esau could have, it could have been Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. But now it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who else did that in the Bible? King Saul. God told King Saul, God did not want a monarchy, but since the people picked Saul, God said, if you had just obeyed me, I would have established you in your house forever. But Saul was sometime he was halfway with God. Saul wanted a little bit of spirit and a little bit of flesh, a little bit of God and a little bit of me, a little bit of what the Lord say and a little bit of what the people say, a little bit of what God wants, a little bit of what I want. And God got sick of that because God does not honor double mindedness. God does not honor die vision, die meaning two, two visions. God don't honor that. You got to have one vision with the Lord, which is his vision. OK, and God rent the king from Saul gave the kingdom to King David, and killed everybody in Saul's family except Mephibosheth. You can, you can miss your whole thing. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. So when the Lord tells us, when the Holy Spirit tells us to pray those accelerated prayers for God to give us all the rain in 30 days in the first month instead of what would happen over a year, it's our job then to line up with whatever the Lord is saying to do so we can get our January work done so when February, March, April, May of this year hits, wherever the Lord is in those months, we can be right there with him and be in sync because we don't want to be caught out of sync with the Lord when changes happen. Does that make sense? <clears throat> All right. If you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen now. Anything you want me to pray for, put it up there now. Now, you've heard me say it before, when you see me close my eyes, 
I'm praying in tongues. I'm seeing if the Holy Ghost is saying if anybody needs healing. And also if there's any de demonic strongholds that need to be cast out. Okay? So if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen. Okay, the Holy Ghost is saying somebody's nose, somebody hurting in their nose. You either broke your nose or you got some cartilage hurting right here. Do this. Take your right hand. Put your hand on your nose and say, in the name of Jesus, I command my nose to be whole. I command my nose to be healed. I command my nose to be straight and 100% whole in the name of Jesus. Hmm. Okay. Holy Ghost is saying somebody needs some health and healing for their spine. Okay. So we're going to do two things. Put your left hand on your back. Put your right hand on the screen and touch my fingers. Okay, let me move it over here so you can see me. Oh, you can't see me on both. Just put your hand on the screen and say, In the name of Jesus, I command my back to be every whit whole. I command every vertebrae to straighten out. I speak life, health, and healing to my back. I rebuke the spirit of scoliosis. And I command my back to be straight without surgery. And I command my back to be every whit whole in the name of Jesus. Amen. You'll see your back begin to straighten out. You'll feel the power of God flow through you. Okay? All right. Whew. Okay. The Holy Ghost is saying that some people that are struggling with stubbornness. Stubbornness is very, very bad in the scriptures. It's like idolatry and witchcraft. Stubbornness is where <clears throat> you're digging your heels in and you're telling God you're not going to obey. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of stubbornness. I cast out the stubbornness demon. If there's anything influencing you to try to hinder you from obeying the will of God and you're being stubborn, in the name of Jesus, I cast that out right now. And I break that stronghold off of your life in the name of Jesus Christ because the demons are subject to us in the name of Jesus. So in the name of Jesus, let all stubbornness be gone from your life so you can obey the voice of God. You know how I know healing is true? Because, you know, I've had a mole underneath my eye for a long time. This week, I cursed it and commanded it to dry up and fall off in the name of Jesus, and now it's gone. Just that little pip left. You see that? Remember how I always told you that there's nothing that I'm telling you that I'm not doing? Well, remember, I had a big old mole right here underneath my eye. I cursed it. I put my finger on it, cursed it, and commanded it to dry up. And this week, it fell off. And look at that. Look at that. It's gone. See that? I always tell you, I'm never telling you to do something that I'm not doing. It's working. Okay? So that's what I mean when I say we, can, we need to listen to the Holy Ghost, and we need to listen when he's talking. Okay? So let me see if there's anything else he wants me to say. For behold, my people, I have called you to get all the rain you need in the first month. I have called you to... Be in sync with me in a new level in a way you've never been in sync with before. Behold you, I've called you to a season of no more delay. The things you've been waiting on in some cases for years, they're here now. They're ready for you now. Now is your season. Now is your time. Therefore, my people, I expect you to go forth, conquer, take the land, and receive from me all the rain I want to send you and all the blessings I want to give you. I release unto you a spirit of receiving the rain. I release unto you a new level of faith where you can believe me for accelerated blessings. And I release unto you a new level of vision so you can see how fast and how far I can take you in a very short amount of time, says the Spirit of the living God. Mm, amen, amen. That blesses my heart. Now, I'm receiving all that. That's the Holy Ghost talking. He might be talking through me, but that's not me. Now, I'm receiving all that. God wants to do more for me in a short amount of time. I receive it. Okay, God wants to send me the rain for the year in 30 days, I receive it. God wants to show me how fast he can take me to other levels, I receive it. I'm receiving all that. Because I told you, I'm never saying anything to you that I'm not doing and living myself. Okay, so God bless you. That's it for this week. I hope that lesson was an encouragement to you. Because it's always an encouragement to me. And I count it as a complete and total honor to be used by God. Because God don't need me. I say that to every minister, every Christian, that we be confident 
but also that we stay humble so that we realize God don't need you. <laughs> God don't need you. If God is doing anything in your life, he's opening his hand because he loves you. He's giving you an opportunity to be a part of his kingdom, his life, his heart. It's an opportunity. But if you slap his hand away, God don't need you. God don't need you. I don't care if you got the Holy Ghost running out your toes. I don't care if you prophesy in 14 kinds of tongues. God don't need you. God raise up another prophet. He can raise up another pastor. He can raise up another evangelist. God don't need you. So I count it as an honor every time I come out here for the Lord to use me to flow in his prophetic gift and for the Spirit of God to breathe through me. And I want you to feel the same way. I want you to, to embrace your ministry and do what the Lord is telling you to do. But remember, it's an honor and a privilege. God doesn't need you. He can use somebody else to do what you're doing. He doesn't need you. So I'm grateful. That's all I'm saying. I'm grateful to be used by God. And I want you to be grateful too. Okay? God bless you. Uh, I hope you have a really good rest of your Sunday. Enjoy the Pro Bowl. Enjoy the rest of your week. Look for that rain in the first month. And let's be sure we get January's work done so that when February comes in, we're ready to move with Christ. Okay? God bless you. I love you with the love of Jesus. And I will talk to you same time next week.